Aries 20, a young girl feeding birds in winter. It's a girl, feminine, it's young, innocent, winter, the cruelty of nature, feeding, giving food, bread, something tangible, real, useful. Um, this is quite a lot of information in that title, isn't there? So if, if we unpick all of those little bits and pieces, we find that a state of being can be found within each of us, man or woman, adult or child, which relates to the, the young girl image. In other words, whatever we are, we can be a little bit more innocent, a little bit more trusting in life, a little bit more feminine and just nurturing, nourishing, holding, not intending, not intentional. Um, we can be more like that. And it is suggested in this mystery that in that state of being, then giving has a deeper quality. I think this degree is studying what giving is. And really, we're able to see that giving is a tangible expression of love. It is not only that. It is also evidence of the, the mystical relationship between what goes out and what comes back. So, understanding, for example, has an interesting couple of interpretations. What does understanding mean to you? Well, on the one hand, it means that you, you get somebody's ideas. Oh, I understand what you mean, on the one hand. But on the other hand, somebody shows understanding in a situation of, of emotional turmoil. They probably offer tea and sympathy and silence. Not interested to understand the intellectual presentation of an idea in this case, but the depth of emotion being felt by another person. So we see the, the word understanding has two quite different meanings, actually. Um, but if we look linguistically, standing under someone means you're supporting them. So if they need emotional support, then you listen with a cup of tea. If they need tangible support, then you give them bread. And if somebody's actually in need of bread, they don't want their feelings explored. They want bread. They're hungry. And if you actually say how much you sympathize with their hunger whilst maintaining a spare loaf of bread in your larder, you haven't shown understanding at all. They don't want your listening attention. They want your bread. On the other hand, if somebody complains about a problem and they, they, they say they want you to fix it, but the truth is that the way in which they say that is clearly an unspoken request for emotional support, then just to fix their problem doesn't fix their problem at all. In that case, giving them a loaf of bread is, is, is not helpful. We have to really go deeper. So the act of giving on the face of it is the passing of something tangible, bread. But underneath that is the understanding that this other person needs something from me. Here it is. Whether that's bread or a kindness in your voice, in your tone, in your smile, they probably need the kindness as much as they need the bread or possibly they do. So whenever you, you are able to spare a coin for a beggar, instead of just throwing the coin in the, the bag, give it to them with a, a contact, an eye contact. They, they want involvement with kindness. They, they want to feel the heart, your heart, your radiant heart. They, they want that feeling. And that comes through the eyes, not, not the coin. <clears throat> if we are aware of this idea of the cycle of life, what you give out, this is what you get back, and so on, then 
it is simply an expediency to give because that means you're going to receive. So on the one hand, it's, it's a very good policy for optimizing your wealth is to give. A bit cynical, I suppose, but nevertheless, it answers some of your questions, perhaps. But the, um, the more important understanding is that those who have the capacity to give and distribute and share and, and, and just deal appropriately with physical things become the conduit for giving as an archetype, the archetype, the angel of giving, wants to act through those people who are able to carry out the giving in the appropriate way giving the right thing at the right time to the right person. So as we practice giving, and we can see it as a spiritual practice, we have to learn how to do this. And to do this in a heart-centered way, at an appropriate time, with the appropriate tangible physical gesture, a loaf of bread or a bit of money or a helping hand, whatever, those all come together to be the, the act of giving, which is the expression of an archetype. And I, I think you'll notice that that archetype operates through the heart. Uh, I do know that um, in some examples, um, the more masculine approach to giving is, is, is operated, like foreign aid, very masculine approach to giving. And it's, it's sharp. Uh, like when, that, when, when it's said that charity is cold, that's what is meant, this, this sharp, analytical, specified approach that has no heart in it at all. Well, yeah, that's called giving, but it's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is a mystical experience. It's a spiritual practice of benefit, considerable benefit to the giver. Because since it operates the heart, it... it exercises the heart, it strengthens the heart, it trains the heart to do what the heart does. And what the heart does really well is two things, actually. The heart is the, the organ of love, the spiritual organ of love. So it, it deepens your sense of being able to feel love. And, and that's sweet and, and lovely. Um, and it also develops authenticity. The heart is true. And authenticity is a major spiritual gift. So we have love and truth both represented by a deep and real heart. We want both of these things. Um, this is the fast track to spirituality when you've uh, mastered both love and truth. And they come together in the form of wisdom. There is wisdom in the act of hospitality. And this is known by the, the, the dervish. In the Sufi tradition, the, the practitioner of Sufism is called a dervish. And one way in which the dervish practices his art, his craft, his spiritual way, is to just to live on the road, to be a mendicant, to travel with nothing but a bowl and a, a robe and waiting for food to come and praying while it while he waits and a lot of people misunderstand the dervish and, and think of the dervish as a a beggar um to be scorned because he's not contributing anything to society um in the modern era, in the West, you won't get away with this life as being a mendicant very easily because people have that attitude of, of disrespecting a beggar. But the dervish has an exemplary heart. We would all want the heart of a dervish. It feels so wonderful to be so full of love. And what the dervish does by needing to receive is to stimulate in various people the act of giving, so that the giver can understand the joy of giving. And the, the dervish needs the, 
um, opportunity to teach giving very much more than the bread, very much more than the, the kindness. The dervish needs to teach and to show. And what the dervish does in this act of receiving in a spiritual way is to promote giving in another. So this whole mystery of, of giving bread to birds is best understood by looking at the, the relationship between giving and receiving and understanding that neither is more spiritual than the other. To be able to receive the generosity of another person is sometimes rather more difficult than to give. And this is because receiving is, is, is not understood by society as, as being of service to it, and yet it is. So we learn to receive and we learn to give in the same spirit of, of love. What is happening is that love is being exchanged. And when somebody is offering you love, well, you, you receive it with gratitude and you probably reciprocate. You'd be, be foolish if you didn't express love back, wouldn't it, when you received a gift? Mm -hmm.